Hello everyone and welcome to Medicine Simplified. So today in the second part of this ophthalmology image based revision, we are going to discuss the important topics like cataract, glaucoma and uh, retinal problems, retinopathy of prematurity, retinoblastomas and different types of uh, vitamin deficiencies uh, related to ophthalmology. Right. So let's begin it. And uh, to begin with, we will start with the first and very most important topic that is cataract. Okay, so we'll start with cataract. So what is cataract actually? It is opacification of the lens or its capsule or both, right? So opacification of lens or capsule or both is known as cataract. It is the most common cause of blindness in the world, right? So uh, let's classify the cataract on the based on etiology. So it can be a congenital cataract which is from the birth in the child or it can be an acquired cataract, which is acquired due to any systemic disease, it is acquired due to any due to the age-related things, it can be a traumatic traumatic cataract, complicated cataract, and such things. Right? So congenital cataract and acquired cataract. So let's first talk about congenital cataract. So in congenital cataract, most common type of congenital cataract that is blue dot cataract and also known as punctate cataract, right? It is the most common type of congenital cataract, and this is how a uh, blue dot cataract looks like, right? You can see the bluish dot is very much evident and if such image comes, you can surely mark the answer correct. Going further, in congenital cataract, there's a zonular or lamellar cataract. So this cataract is the most common type of congenital cataract, which is causing blindness or loss of vision in the child, right? So most common congenital type causing visual loss is this uh, zonular or lamellar cataract, and this is how a zonular or lamellar cataract looks. Now, going further, uh, talking about the systemic disease and their related cataracts. So, first we are talking about the sunflower cataract, right? So, the sunflower cataract, uh, which is seen in Wilson's disease, is somewhat looking typically like a sunflower. In the center, you can see the beads and the petals, which Come outside, so it is typically looking like a sunflower. And the important thing to remember is that it is seen in Wilson's disease. The next is oil drop cataract. It is seen in myotonic dystrophy, right? And the enzyme deficient in myotonic dystrophy is galactose one phosphate uretyl transferase, which which you might have learned basically from the biochem, right? Now, this is how an oil drop cataract looks like. You can see, in the center there is a drop of an oil. Now, Christmas tree cataract, uh, I'm sorry, oil drop cataract is seen in galactosemia. I might have said a myotonic dystrophy. So, oil drop cataract is seen in galactosemia. And Christmas tree cataract, which is seen in myotonic dystrophy, right? And this is how a Christmas tree appearance is seen in this cataract, right? Every time, though not a similar image might be seen. So, another image just to uh, have a better orientation for this cataract. So you can see how our Christmas tree cataract looks like. Going for the snowflake cataract, snowflake cataract is seen in diabetics, right? And it is the only uh, cataract with sudden loss of vision. Usually, uh, cataracts are slow growing and uh, the loss of vision is not sudden, but it is the, the true uh, diabetic cataract is the only cataract with the sudden loss of vision. And this is how a snowflake cataract looks like. You can see. A whitish drop, many uh, sides like a snow drops. Now, rosette cataract. Rosette cataract is seen in blunt trauma, right? Commonly seen in blunt trauma, and this is how a rosette cataract looks like, right? Okay, now this uh, we have discussed the etiological classification. Now, talking about the morphological classification, first look at this lens, it is having an anterior pole, posterior pole. Right, the cortex, and inside there is a nucleus. So, if the cataract or opacification is at the anterior pole, it is called as anterior polar cataract. At the posterior pole, it is called as posterior pole cataract. Uh, if it is on in the cortex, cortical cataract in the nucleus, nuclear cataract. And one more, there is posterior subcapsular cataract. So, these are the morphological classification of a cataract. Now, talking about the drugs which can cause subcapsular cataract. cataract Caused by drugs are usually subcapsular, posterior subcapsular, and these are the drugs which are causing amiodarone, 
phenothazine, phylocarpine, gold, steroids, chloroquine, sulfan, etc. Right. So these are the drugs which are causing subcatheter cataracts. Now next is SRK formula. What is the use of SRK formula? It is used to calculate the power of a lens or power of a IOL intraocular lens which is to be placed in a patient. Right. So this is the formula P is equal to A1 minus 0.9 into K minus 2.5 L. So what is A? A is the intraocular lens specific constant. Right. Then K is the average corneal refractive power. Then L is the axial length which is uh, calculated by different means. So now these are the different IOLs. Right. Multifocal IOL, toric monofocal. Monofocal IOL, aspheric monofocal, monofocal, toric monofocal lens, etc. These are the different types of IOL used in the uh, surgeries, cataract surgeries. Now, post operative complications. The most common uh, post operative complication is a secondary cataract, also known as after cataract. It is also known as posterior capsular opacification. Posterior capsular opacification. And these are the two variants of this after cataract. One is etching pearls. Uh, after cataract and another is sobering rings after cataract. So uh, this are, this is just a uh, basic uh, diagram drawn just to know how it looks. But the actual look of this sobering ring and elching pearl is like this. You can see a pearl the here and here. So this is elching pearl seen in secondary or after cataract, and this is the sobering rings, right? How it looks. These are the two important images, uh, most common complication of a post-operative uh, cataract. Now going further, let's talk about the glaucoma. Right? So what is glaucoma? It is a multifactorial chronic or uh, progressive optic neuropathy occurring due to death of the retinal ganglion cells. Now there are three parameters of glaucoma. One is increased intraocular pressure. Intraocular pressure normally is 10 to 21, having diurnal nature. Which I have discussed in the part one. So, intraocular pressure more than 21 mm per hg, visual defects, right, and optic disc or nerve damage. So, these are the three parameters. If any two of this is present, it is called as glaucoma. It is diagnosed as glaucoma. Only increased intraocular pressure is not glaucoma, it is, uh, it is termed as ocular hypertension. So, never ever say that increased intraocular pressure is glaucoma, it is ocular hypertension. Increased intraocular pressure along with these two. That is mutual field defect or optic disorder or nerve damage, it might be defined as glaucoma. Now, as I said, if only two is present, we can diagnose it as a glaucoma. But usually, we know that intraocular pressure is high in glaucoma. But if there are intraocular pressure is normal and still we have visual field defect and optic, optic disc or nerve damage together, so this two point if they are present together, but normal ocular pressure, it is called as normal tension glaucoma. Now the classification of glaucoma, again, it is divided into primary and secondary. Uh, secondary is due to the uh, other causes, other diseases like uveitis, trauma, steroid induced, etc. Whereas primary is further divided into developmental glaucoma and congenital glaucoma. So this is a table distinguished between the developmental and acquired glaucoma. Developmental is also known as childhood glaucoma, whereas acquired is known as adult glaucoma. So the congenital uh, that is the childhood is divided into congenital, infantile and juvenile. So infantile is from birth up to six months. Then from six months to three years, it is infantile. Congenital is from the birth up to six months. From six months to three years, it is infantile. And after three years, till the age of 13 years, it is called as juvenile uh, congenital glaucoma. Whereas acquired or adult are divided into open angle or closed angle. Angle closure, right? Then open angle is also divided into two types. It is primary open angle glaucoma or secondary open angle glaucoma. Whereas angle closure is again divided into primary angle closure glaucoma and secondary angle closure glaucoma. So this was the basic classification of glaucoma. Now talking first about the congenital glaucoma. Congenital glaucoma is also known as ophthalmos, right? So it is present due to the anomaly, due to the presence of the Parkinson's membrane. Congenital anomaly due to the presence of Parkinson's membrane leads to the congenital glaucoma. Now there is a classical triad of the congenital glaucoma, abbreviated as BPL or mnemonic is a BPL. You can call it as Bharat Petroleum Limited. You can call it as uh, Bangladesh Premier League if you like cricket, or you can call it as Barclays Premier League if you like football. 
you can call it anything even you can call b pay lahat in hindi the b you can understand what is that so uh, but the thing is you should remember the triad that is uh, blepharospasm photophobia and lacrimation so these are the triad of congenital glaucoma now going further in congenital glaucoma uh, there is a presence of hatch triad what is hatch triad is horizontal or circumferential tear of the desmans membrane now this is how it looks like you can appreciate in the center there is a tear in the desmans membrane so as i said earlier or uh, every time not a similar image will be seen this is just to understand how it looks so can be also like this you can see circumferential horizontal it is a very damaged desmans membrane here there is a single line but it, you should understand this is known as hatch triad whether it is it is looking like this or looking like this right now talking about fincham set what is fincham set it is used to differentiate the colored halos between cataract and angle closure glaucoma right so colored halos it is seen in cataract as well as angle closure glaucoma and to distinguish whether this colored halos is due to cataract or angle closure glaucoma we do fincham test using a stenopic slit using a stenopic slit now if this the slit splits and unite back it is due the colored halos is due to cataract and if it is at, not at all splitting it is angle closure glaucoma and this is how a stenopic slit looks like so you can get a question this slit is used for the following three things uh, in which one answer will be a fincham test now going further we have completed the cataract and glaucoma related images now talking about the refractive errors so refractive errors is known as ametropia a normal eye is called as ametropia if there is an error we will call it as a ametropia now here first we have a normal eye what happens in a normal eye the ray of light will fall on the retina right if it is a myopia it will fall in front of retina if it is hypermetropia it will go beyond the retina and fall behind the retina now there is another variant that is astigmatism it is having the two foci right uh, not the ray is not directly uh, falling on the retina it is having it, it might fall but the it will have a two foci not at one point it will fall at two different point so that is known as uh, astigmatism so first now talk about the difference in myopia and hypermetropia then we'll talk about the astigmatism as a single kind now difference between myopia and hypermetropia so what is happening in, happening in myopia in myopia there is a the ray of light as i said and this here it is falling in front of retina whereas in hypermetropia it is falling behind the retina right now this uh, myopia and hypermetropia are further divided into uh, different types it is axial myopia or axial hypermetropia it can be curvatural myopia and hypermetropia it can be index myopia hypermetropia and it can be a positional myopia and hypermetropia so let's uh, talk about them what they actually mean by also uh, one more thing which you should know that uh, it is a basic that is uh, the myopia is known as short sightedness whereas the hypermetropia is known as long sighted so what is happening in uh, axial myopia in axial myopia the length of eyeball is increased suppose this is an eyeball if the length of the eyeball is increased right so the normally if the ray is passing uh, is fell, uh, falling at this point if the uh, length is increased the ray will fall at the same point but the length has been increased so it is not falling on the retina it is falling in front of retina and due to this there is a myopia so axial myopia is caused due to the lengthening of the eyeball right increased length of eyeball and in the same time if the eyeball size has been decreased right this is the normal size of an eyeball the ray is falling here at the retina now the size of the retina is, uh, the eyeball is decreased so the ray will fall at the same place but as the size of retina has been decreased it will fall behind the uh, behind the retina and it will cause axial hypermetropia so in axial myopia the length of eyeball is increasing in axial hypermetropia the length of eyeball is decreasing similarly there is a curvature uh, myopia in which the curvature is been increased this is the normal curvature due to which it is falling on the retina now if the curvature is increased somewhat straightened or like this uh, it is increased curvature means the uh, curvature will be more uh, bent right so it will fall in front if it is decreased that is it will be a straight so it will be fall behind the retina so once again curvature myopia example is keratoconus so if you see in keratoconus 
have been um, described it in the previous uh, video that is the first part of this video that how keratoconus look and in keratoconus there is a curvature of myopia whereas in cornea plana like that, that is the cornea is plain straight not curved right in that we can uh, get a curvature hypermetropia now going further now going further uh, index right index myopia it occurs due to the sclerosis in the nucleus of the lens whereas hypermetropia will uh, index hypermetropia will occur due to the sclerosis in the cortex of the lens right now positional if the lens is positioned or uh, anteriorly from where it is so the distance uh, of the ray will be the same so if it is ahead it will fall in front of retina if it is behind uh, from where it is should be located then it will fall behind the retina so positional myopia is caused due to the anterior dislocation or anterior positioning of lens even if it is dislocated it will cause a uh, myopia whereas hypermetropia if it is a positional hypermetropia in that what will happen the uh, lens will be posteriorly dislocated or it will be the uh, the posterior positioning of the lens now for treating the myopia we use concave lens whereas for treating the uh, hypermetropia we use the convex lens now talking about the astigmatism where there are two different focal points right two different focuses now this is a normal eye you can see the light is passing on uh, falling on the retina whereas uh, if it, it is an astigmatism you can see there are two different focal points right so this is not always like this what is ap appearing is in this image it is an example how there are two foci right multiple foci so astigmatism it is having two different uh, focal points right now it is further divided into five types that is compound myopic simple myopic compound hypermyopic hyperopic simple hyperopic mixed astigmatism now the simple fund is this myopic means the ray is falling in front of retina now if there is one ray which is falling on retina and another is falling in front of retina it is simple if the one both the ray are falling in front of retina it is compound myopic right similarly if the ray one ray is falling on retina another is falling behind the retina it is simple hyperopic but if both the ray are falling behind the retina it is compound hyperopic and if one is falling in front of retina one is falling in behind the retina then it is a mixed astigmatism now going further we'll talk about the cotton wool spots where uh, we can see a cotton wool spot it is most commonly seen in diabetic retinopathy also seen in hiv infection patient with hiv infection ocular hiv infection this is how a cotton wool spots look like you can see the different white patches looks like a cotton wool right many times what happen we are confused between this cotton wool spot and the hemorrhagic spot so here i have see this cotton wool spot will look whitish whereas this hemorrhages will look red with some white border right so if it is purely white spot it is a cotton wool spot most commonly seen in diabetic retinopathy also seen in hiv uh, patient now another thing which is seen in diabetic retinopathy is no vascularization you can see Uh, this is the macula right where well, one optic nerve is there then retinal blood vessels are there and here here it is the macula whereas when you see this image you can see multiple tiny new vessels are been formed at near the optic disc and this is known as new vascularization which is seen in diabetic retinopathy also i mentioned that cotton wool spots in see is seen in diabetic retinopathy and microaneurysm and edema microaneurysm and edema at the place of macula is also seen in diabetic retinopathy now this is how a uh, new vascularization looks like right once again you can see here and uh, here you can see near the macula it is blurred so leave it uh, in this image here you can see many vessels are been uh, many small new vessels have been originating which is known as new vascularization seen in diabetic retinopathy now rop what is rop it is retinopathy of pre maturity right retinopathy of pre maturity so what are the risk factor for retinopathy of pre maturity uh, the child is born less in less than 32 weeks of gestation the child is having less than 1500 grams of weight when he is born when he or she is born uh, excess oxygen supply uh, supplementation to a newborn child maybe hyperbaric oxygen can be also a cause 
Now, cause of loss of vision in the retinopathy of prematurity is fractional retinal detachment. The retina has been uh, detached due to a fractional force applied on it. Right? This is the cause of loss of vision in retinopathy of prematurity. Now, as you can see here, this is a normal blood vessel, right? Here, there is a retinal rim. What is happening? The retina is getting detached due to abnormal blood vessels. With ROP, blood vessels can become large. What is happening in ROP? The blood vessels are becoming large and twisted. And they can they are pulling the retina in, inside, causing fractional ret retinal detachment. Now, there are five stages of retinopathy of prematurity. In stage one, we can see the clear demarcation line in the first stage. Now, the line uh, will thicken and form a ridge in stage two. In stage three, new blood vessel will grow. That is new new vascularization, you can say. Now, partial detached retina. The retina is detached partially in stage four and in stage five, it is completely detached retina. So in stage one, demarcation line is seen. Stage two, the line widens and forms a ridge. In stage three, new blood vessel will grow. That is new vascularization. In stage four, the retina is detached partially. In stage five, the retina is detached completely. This were the stages of retinopathy of prematurity. Now, leukoporia. Leukoporia uh, typically means white pupil, right? It is originated from a Greek word, leukos means white and korea means pupil, white pupil. It refers to the reflection of white light upon the direct illumination of the fundus through the pupil in contrast to usually red glow. Usually, the fundus is giving a red glow when we do uh, direct illumination, but in uh, leukoporia, in some conditions, it is white reflection. So we call it as a white pupil leukoporia. Now the differential diagnosis. In which conditions we can see leukoporia? We can see it in retinoblastoma, congenital cataract, PHPV, Woods disease, etc. This is how a leukoporia looks like. You can see a white reflection. Now, as I have mentioned, it is seen in various conditions. So how will you uh, find whether it is a uh, leukoporia of a diabetic uh, retinopathy? Uh, it is at a uh, Leukoporia of a retinoblastoma, congenital cataract, or post disease. So, here there is a table from which we can diagnose whether this leukoporia is from which uh, disease. So, in congenital cataract, it is usually autosomal dominant, right? And the usual age at diagnosis is at birth. So, the leukoporia will be seen at birth in case of congenital cataract, whereas uh, the congenital cataract will be bilateral in case of a congenital uh, leukoporia will be a bilateral leukoporia in case of congenital cataract. Also, amblyop amblyopia and associated disease syndromes will be seen. Now, retinoblastoma, it can be sporadic, it can be inherited, autosomal dominant is most common if it is inherited. If it is a sporadic retinoblastoma, it is seen at in the, the leukoporia will be seen at the age between one to three years. If it is less than one year, it is inherited and usually unilateral. In case of sporadic, it is bilateral. Now, what is PHPV? It is persistent hypoplastic primary vitreous. Uh, this is uh, seen congenital. It is the leukoporia here will be congenital and it will be present at the age at the time of birth and it's usually unilateral. Then, towards disease, it's a sporadic disease. It is seen at the age of eight to ten years, like. Usually, uh, the young school going boys wear coat, and this disease is seen mostly in young boys, so it is known as coat's disease with one eye uh, reflecting, that is, unilateral eye will be a leukoporic eye. Then, in retinopathy of prematurity, four to six weeks, we can see this thing, right? And it is a bilateral. So, this is how you can find out the leukoporia, uh, like differentiate the patient of leukoporia whether it is having a congenital cataract, retinoblastoma, persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, coarse disease, or retinopathy of prematurity. You can see if it is at the age of 8 to 10, you can directly mark it as uh, the coarse disease. What will be different, difficult when it is at the birth, right? So at birth, it will be either congenital cataract or PHP. So what is how, to, how will you distinguish if it is a unilateral at the time of birth, right? So it is PHP. If it is bilateral, it is congenital cataract. Now, Coates disease, I mentioned retinopathy of prematurity will be seen at the age of four to six weeks. Like after one month of the childbirth, one and one and a half month, if you see leukoporia, it can be due to ROP. And if it is later uh, at the age of one, two, three, so it can be a retinoblastoma. Let's talk about flexner intestinal rosette. Flexner intestinal rosette is 
a hallmark of retinoblastoma and this is how flexus intestinal rosette looks like it has a central lumen uh, with short cytoplasmic processes whereas if you compare it with the armor or bright rosette it has a central lumen with neutrophilic uh, fiber mesh work so this is how a flexner winter skin rosette and homer right rosette looks like now we'll talk about retinal blastoma in a very short it is a malignant tumor of embryonic retina that uh, james wardrop was the first ophthalmologist who recognized this tumor in 1809 right and uh, it is it is uh, it is occurring due to the mutation of rb1 gene at 13 to 14 uh, chromosome and affects usually the children under the age of Five years, and I have already mentioned about the leukocoria we are seeing in retinoblastoma. Right? It is a unilateral or bilateral. It can be a unilateral or bilateral. It can be unifocal or multifocal. It can be hereditary or non-hereditary. That is sporadic. And disease can be familial or sporadic. Now, cellular tumors densely packed around the neoplastic cells is being seen. Flexner, Wintersteiner rosette, which is a hallmark. Homer right rosette, which I have already mentioned, and fluorite is seen in retinoblastoma. now there is five stages of retinoblastoma a b c d e in a there is a small tumor that is restricted then uh, it is confined to retina in stage b it is a large tumor at all location but it still it is confined to retina in stage c this local uh, this tumor will be local that is in the eye but it is uh, giving its seedling in vitreous right it is going beyond retina so it is invading the adjacent tissues and spaces and stage uh, stage d what will happen it will not remain local it will be a diffuse settling in the vitreous that is it is a widespread uh, in all over the vitreous and in stage d it will be unsalvageable destroyed retina uh, that was about retinoblastoma staging now talking about stroma what is stroma it is interruption or break in the visual field surrounded by a field of normal visual field right interruption or break in the visual field surrounded by a remaining normal or no, remaining normal visual field so this is how a stroma looks like you can see the image right this person can see everything properly but he is having a central stroma and the center there is a interruption or break in the stroma stroma not only it is a central it can be a different types of central stroma here you can see he can see in center but there is a part circular part where you cannot see in between so these are the types of scotoma germ area is having germ scotoma central scotoma if it is above the central scotoma we call it as paracentral scotoma if it is adjacent to the scotoma we call it as a centrosecal scotoma behind central uh, next to the blind spot blind spot it is sedal scotoma if it is the at the side of the visual field that is nasal step scotoma so these are the various type of scotoma which we can see now talking about the pupils first uh, type of pupil that is marcus lens pupil it is usually seen in optic neuritis for uh, checking this uh, marcus lens marcus lens pupil we usually do swinging torch test right what will happen if there is no light the eyes are normal normal response to light means what happen if we uh, suppose we put light in a eye right so the eye will the pupil will constrict but in marcus lens pupil it occurs different the pupil will dilate right the pupil will not constrict instead of dilating the pupil will not uh, instead of constricting the pupil will remain same it has no effect <coughs> from the light now argyle robertson pupil it is usually seen in neurosyphilis right so what happens in primary gaze <coughs> eyes are normal so if there is a light response it will not react but if there is a uh, object coming nearer to it it will re- the pupil will react that is accommodation reflex is present the pupil will constrict when it needs to see something coming near but if there is a light response it will uh, it will not reflect right so accommodation reflex is present arp argyle robertson pupil accommodation reflex present and if you go opposite what is uh, absent in that will go opposite p prime pupillary reflex absent so arp accommodation reflex present pra pupillary reflex absent now ad ad is pupil <clears throat> it is a tonically dilated pupil reacts much much significantly to accommodation more than light it is caused by infection of a ciliary ganglion now horner syndrome 
it is also called as oculo sympathetic paralysis characterized by a classical triad of meiosis that is constricted pupil partial ptosis and loss of hemifacial sweating that is anhydrosis also one more thing is seen in it that is anophthalmos now talking about squint uh, in squint i have not much to say but i have few images uh, of the types of squint how the eyes look like so if it is a esotropia that is the eye is turning towards inward right so this is the normal gaze if that eye is turning inwards it is esotropia if it is the defective uh, eye is going outward it is called exotropia if it is going upwards it is hypertropia if it is going low below it is hypertropia now talking about this spot on the cornea that is bitot spot right it is caused due to vitamin a deficiency and here is the classification or the table of vitamin a deficiency classification xn means nine black n for night blindness 1a is conjunctival cirrhosis 1b is bitot spot b for bitot spot and it is seen in uh, vitamin a deficiency then x2 is corneal cirrhosis x3a is corneal ulceration or keratomalacia which is involving one third or less than one third of cornea right if it is involving more than half of cornea it is x3b if there is a corneal scarring present it is xs and if it is a cerephthalmic fundus it is called as xf classified as xf so that was all about the, the second part of the video hope you liked it so do watch the first part if you have not watched it if you have watched it share with your friends thanks for watching this video hope you liked it please like share and subscribe my channel medicine simplified thank you